So along the lines of career path and patience, study a simple money management and position management strategy that will keep losses within reasons while still allowing for unlimited gains. I got an email last weekend. Somebody said, Dave, it's choppy and sideways out there. I want to implement a spread strategy that's going to be market neutral. It's like, you know, that's fine, but you could you could get chewed up pretty bad in that type of system. And if you're not really careful, you could be limited gains and impossible unlimited losses if you're trying a market neutral system. And at the least, even if you do have limited losses, you still have limited gains if you're doing some kind of spreading like that. So I would encourage you to avoid avoid that type of thinking and focus on how we're going to get this big outlier, like the 700 and something percent outlier in CPE and some of those other stocks in the portfolio that are doing really well. Well, of course, you do that by chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, and you don't know what's going to turn into a big winner. I think every position, again, has the potential to turn into a huge winner. GHVI right now, I think, should go to the moon. I think we should double or triple in that. If you have kids' college funds, and just drain them all now and put all your money in that stock, right? I'm I'm kidding, obviously. Half kidding? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So I don't know for a fact. I mean, if I knew for a fact, again, it'd be another one of those never seen my fat ass again things. But I feel like my money management sets us up, especially if you do pretty good stock picking on top of that, but it sets us up for the potential for that longer term gain within with limited risk. Now, I talk about psychology until I'm blue in the face. And once you get in the trenches, it's a lot different. Like I've been saying last two, three weeks in my stock charts presentation, you tell people markets go up and markets go down. They look, like you, they look at you like you pooed your pants, but if they get in a market and it starts going down, they don't admit it's going down. They try to tell you why it's not going down. And along those lines, we're, we have a very hard uh, uh, time admitting we're wrong. And like I said, last week at Bandcamp and last week's week of charts, I took a personality test, scored a zero or a negative, or could have, <laughs> in agreeableness. And that's not a good trait for trading. And it, 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 doing that self-discovery, like the gentleman that, that wants to trade that we talked about earlier, it's like, you know, it's it's mostly psychological when you when you boil it all down. And if you can learn who you are, then you're you're go that goes a long ways into making it in the market. And my epiphany over probably the last 10 years or so has been I knew it was tough from a psychological standpoint, but I didn't realize there was a physiological thing that is happening. And I've dusted off a book. On the shelf that I had on the shelves that has a bunch of underlining and on. I'm rereading it again. It's called The Investor's Brain. If you really want to be nerdy and get into the neurology of it all, that would be a good book to read. Uh, read The Brain by, forget the guy's name. It's a fairly small book, but it's very interesting. It has nothing to do with trading, but it's kind of a, an owner's manual for the brain. And then another book that comes to mind would be Curtis Faith, Trading from the Gut. And he talks a little bit about the neurology that's involved there and the, what's his name? Can't think of his name, but I've done presentations. Brett Steenberger, Steenberger, I've, I've done some presentations on his, the two U's where two different parts of your brain, there's one part of your brain going into the trade and then there's another part of your brain that functions or operates once you're in the trade. And so that's part of that onion. It's like once you figure it out, like, oh, man, I'm all excited about this trade. I'm feeling this way, right? Well, all of a sudden, it goes from this side of your brain to that side of your brain or vice versa once you get into the trade. And if you study more neurology, it's like your panic is down here in your primitive part of your brain. And then your fears a little bit further up. And then. It helps to, to learn these things, again, without going too far. 
I would say paper trade until successful. I've never met an unsuccessful paper trader. Somebody pointed out that, well, nowadays with with tracking as good as it is, if you're using a trading simulator, you'll probably bump into someone who's unsuccessful as a as a paper trader. I have bumped into one guy once, said he's a little unsuccessful, so you know, ruin your thing. I was like, well, how long have you been trading? Two weeks? I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> that doesn't count. But even with simulators, so far I haven't ran into an unsuccessful paper trade. It's a lot harder to put real money on the line. Someone in my uh, on or my was a YouTube channel after one of my presentations. It might have been in the stock charts YouTube channel after my trading simplified show. And I, I wish I could remember exactly what he said, but. I think it was along the lines of trading. He, he stresses out too much in his trading. And my answer to him was to trade at a small size that's pretty much meaningless until you are successful. And one gentleman I know of and have done some business with, he was kind of a behind the scenes type of person and he got to interact with a lot of different traders and and he didn't trade right away but a couple of years later he started trading and he was doing okay and i'm like you know i've never seen anyone even though i know you you had a, a contact with these other guys and we we're able to study their methodologies and such but i've never seen anyone just jump in and do okay and he goes dave look i'm i'm trading at such a tiny size here it's it's almost laughable but that's okay he could build those reps at a small size and then go from there. And speaking of increasing your size, slowly increase your size until you reach the maximum of your money management strategy. Now, mine is 2%. And believe me, 2%, when I get hit at 2%, it hurts like a mother father, okay? <laughs> and 2% is a lot. And I know a few people in the Facebook group that are only comfortable with like 1%. And some people are working up to that. That's fine. Just don't risk a quarter percent on this trade and 2% on this trade and 1% on that trade. Just be consistent. Start small again, but very small risk and then move, slowly move to go with bigger and bigger exposure up to a 2% maximum. Now, by the way, as last week at Bandcamp and the thinking like a trade of part three, I showed an example, I think it was CPE, where the initial stop was 23% away from the price and people couldn't take it because the price, because it was so far away. It was too wide of a stop for them to use. Well, all you have to do, I know easy said none, but all you have to do is punch it in the spreadsheet, which I'll give you if you go to davelander.com slash members and click on member resources. And I'll see if I have a direct link that's not behind the firewall and put it in the post for those who weren't a member. But download my tracking spreadsheet and put in the stop, let's say if it's three points away, four points away or whatever, and then put in your account size and how much you want to risk, and then it'll calculate the number of shares. And that share size will come down drastically as that risk goes up on the trade to keep you in line with your 1% risk or 2% risk, whatever you may be risking. I've done complete presentations before where I show that it's actually less riskier, believe it or not, to trade a more volatile stock but trade fewer shares than it is to trade a less volatile share, less volatile stock, because that means you're going to be putting on more shares, okay? And not enough time to get into that tonight, but just trust me, once you see the, the math on that, you'll realize that it, it's just the opposite. It's a little counterintuitive, which you might think. And then here's the other thing, the chance of that volatile stock moving so you can make money on it is a lot better than that non-volatile stock and also something bad can and often will happen in a non-volatile stock so you also have to give yourself time to learn and have you experienced a variety of conditions and i say this ad nauseum but i'm thinking about one couple in, in particular always comes to mind they go in and print money or they went in and print money and then all of a sudden they quit a profitable business that I'm sure took them a long time to build because this trading thing is easy. But I might be seem like I'm picking on this this couple, but 
I see it happen all the time. People come in when things are going really well and they get this permanent income hypothesis and they'll think, they think that it will always be that good. Have you experienced the print money phase where you feel like God? We all have, right? And usually you come, everything comes crashing down soon thereafter. Have you gone through a phase where you couldn't hit the side of the barn? I, I can't imagine being a doctor, a lawyer, or automatic transmission mechanic for 20 something years and this going one day and all of a sudden you feel like a dumbass, okay? <laughs> but trading is like that. You know, the, the guys in the rented jets and Lambos who are on their way to jail now, I would never be shot on Friday, but if they ripped off people, which they did, they deserve to go to jail. So anyway, I digress. But there are times where you can't hit the side of the barn. It's been choppy lately, the ETF trading that I'm trying to make my profit center, or one of my profit centers, kind of hitting this lately, okay? And some days I feel like I can't hit the side of the barn, and, and that's why I'm working harder and harder on this research that we, we talk, we've been talking about again lately. But it happens. Now, knock on wood, the momentum stuff has been doing really, really well. And I joked today, well, one of my uh, clients that I'm very friendly with, we we trade ideas quite often. It's like my uh, my trend trading, my core trend trading is financing my day trading addiction. You know, I was kind of half kidding, but there's some truth to that, it seems like, because thank God the trend trading is going well. But the market does humble you quite a bit. And then the hard phase is where you lose, you lose, you lose, you win, you win, you win, you lose, you win, you lose, you win, you lose, you win. And it seems like you never make any money. I can't think of the guy's name, Gelber maybe. And I think it was in the first market wizards and I'll verify that in post. But he said three months out of the year, you're hot. You're so hot, you just can't believe it. You can't sleep at night. And three months out of the year, you're cold. You're so cold, you can't hit the side of the barn, paraphrasing. And then the rest of the six months, you grind it out. Win, lose, win, lose, 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 win, win, and so on and so forth. So you have to go through all of these phases. You have to go through an, an ugly bear market, okay? You have to go through a phase where you get knocked out of all your positions. 